Hello, my name is Don Dickerman, and I suppose you're watching this because you've either read our book, When Pigs Move In, uh, perhaps uh, e even seen the video, uh, Courtroom of Deliverance. Uh, and I, I guess if we put a title on this, it would probably be When Pigs Move Out. What, uh, what, what do we do once we experience deliverance? And the evil spirits have been cast out of our body and out of our so uh, one, of the, one of the primary questions we get is how do I keep them out? How do I walk in freedom? Um, so I, I wanna address some of those things today. Uh, if demons gain access to an individual, it's always through a doorway. There's always some entry point, some legal permission that's been granted. And while that uh, may be various and different doorways, uh, once a person goes through deliverance, there can be other do doorways opened after deliverance. And so uh, understanding doorways, probably the, the simplest way to understand that is Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man opens the door, I will come into him. And so Jesus came into our lives through a door, through uh, our willing uh, invitation for him to come in. Demons come in the same way. Uh, they stand at the door and they knock. They knock through different uh, temptations, uh, different lies that they give us. But when we yield to that lie, yield to that temptation, uh, we very well could be inviting uh, a demon in. It's not, it's not a, a big deal in the sense that our life is defeated after that. Um, we can deal with it. Uh, Jesus has given us the tools to deal with it. And we can cast the demon right back out. You can. So uh, absolutely, you can live in freedom. And I, I want to I wanna talk about some of the, the obvious doorways uh, for any, any person's life. Uh, and probably the number one doorway that we deal with in deliverance is unforgiveness. When... Uh, when you have an area of unforgiveness in your life, uh, you can be sure that demons have come in. They're the tormentors, and uh, you can actually read about that in the book of Matthew, uh, the, the parable in uh, Matthew chapter 18 that Jesus talked about forgiveness, and how that if a person wouldn't forgive, that he would turn them over to the tormentors. But unforgiveness is a doorway, and all the related sins to unforgiveness uh, hatred and bitterness and resentment and revenge and all the things that are linked to unforgiveness can be doorways. So unforgiveness must be dealt with for a person to stay free. And uh, that's not hard to do. Uh, it's a matter of confessing and uh, releasing it and living in the present. And, and, uh, and I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute, but unforgiveness is definitely a doorway. Uh, anger uh, is a doorway. Uh, the book of Ephesians says to be angry and sin not, to let it not linger to the next day. Lingering anger is also a doorway for demons. You can be sure until the anger has been repented of, uh, and confessed, uh, the demon has permission to be there. So not only is it necessary to confess these things, it's necessary after confessing them to cast the demon out. Now, uh, obvious things uh, would be sexual impurity, uh, pornography, uh, illicit lust, uh, all, all types of sexual impurity, uh, believing lies, lying. Uh, lying is probably one of the simplest doorways that demons get in. If you lie, you open a door. If you believe a lie, uh, you've opened a door. Uh, believing a lie would include false doctrines where you, because maybe you've been taught that way, don't know better, or maybe it appeals to the flesh. You've believed something uh, that's not true. So believing a lie uh, is, is an obvious doorway uh, for demons into uh, a believer's life. I would say... Um, Maybe the simplest way to put this, Jesus said the truth will make us free. And my question with that is if truth sets us free, what causes bondage? 
believing lies. And so uh, it's important that your doctrine be pure. And I'm not talking about exactly as, as some uh, traditional organization has said, but according to the Word of God, uh, you must believe what it says. We must always come into agreement with the truth of God's Word. And if what you believe does not line up with what the Word of God teaches, then you've opened the door to a demon to deceive you. Uh, that's an obvious door. Blasphemy. Uh, blasphemy is, is a doorway to demons. And uh, of course, a lot of these things are all linked uh, to, to anger and bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness. Uh, the occult experiences, curiosity with the occult, uh, taking oaths and vows and pledges uh, that are unholy, uh, soul ties are doorways, uh, trauma, uh, trauma that you, you may have had nothing to do with as far as being the initiator of it, uh, even surgery, sexual abuse, uh, all of the things that are linked to trauma can be doorways to demons. Doubt and unbelief. When you doubt God's word, uh, those can be doorways. Uh, if certain objects in your home could, could be uh, a doorway to demon powers. But uh, there are many others. And I think just the fact that you're watching this as you already know what most of them are. But here's, here's some practical ways to, to deal with this, and I call it the three R's, uh, like reading, writing, and arithmetic. The three R's that I recommend for walking in freedom, for staying free, for living when pigs move out, is to recognize, resist, and remain. We have to be able to recognize the lies and the attacks and uh, to be able to separate what is true from, uh, from what's not true. But by recognizing, as soon as you recognize uh, something to be uh, demonic, to be uh, uh, a source of demons, as soon as you recognize it, it could be even in feelings, as soon as you feel depressed and heaviness, recognize it and deal with it. Uh, by recognizing, uh, you're able to deal with it. As long as you don't recognize it, uh, that's part of the deceit. But you recognize the demonic attack, the demon spirit that's uh, troubling you. You recognize it and you resist it. And the Bible says the promise of God is if we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. He'll flee from you. So you recognize, you resist, and you remain. That's the third R. Uh, I... I, I say it like this, um, and I sometimes say this to demon spirits when I sense their presence, is, you know what? I'm going to be here tomorrow, and I'm going to be free tomorrow. I'm free, and I'll remain free. It's important that you not only take a stand, but that you start walking in that truth and uh, make the stand known to the demons. I'm going to serve the Lord. And uh, he's, he's going to be Lord of my life. And so you come around tomorrow, I'll resist you the same way in the name of Jesus Christ. And let me say this is, this is important. It's important for you to confess sin immediately. Don't let it linger. Uh, you did it, confess it, repent of it, uh, command the demon to go. Uh, that's very important that you not allow sin to linger in your life. And I would say that's probably the first of some freedom principles that I want to share with you is confess the sin, uh, repent of it, get it out of your life, remove all permissions that a demon might have and command the demon to go. Don't allow negative thoughts to have a place in your life. They'll, they'll come, they'll, they'll be there on a regular basis and you have to make a disciplined choice there is no place in my life for a negative thought. I won't dwell on what happened to me yesterday or last week or last year or, or, or anything from the past. A negative thought must be replaced with a scriptural truth. The Bible says clearly, it says, finally, brethren, think on these things. If there be any truth, any virtue, any praise. So you, you learn to shift your thinking so that you don't open doors to demons and let them not get a place 
uh, in, in the negative thinking. Uh, to have uh, a premeditated sin in your life is a definite door opener, door opener where you plan uh, sin, where you, you have a lifestyle uh, of sin and disobedience. Uh, if you premeditate sin, you, you've invited a demon into your life. And so confessing that uh, immediately is important. Uh, anticipate while you're walking uh, in freedom, anticipate more freedom. Uh, we haven't, we haven't um, obtained all that there is. There, uh, I find in, in my life that there's, there's uh, more freedom almost daily in just standing on what is true. Truth sets you free. Uh, lies bring about bondage. Never forget that um, Satan and all his dominions, all his demons, their primary work is lies. So believing a lie empowers the demon in your life. Trust God to, to help you with uh, decisions and choices that you have to make because those choices can be door openers. Learn to, learn to use uh, effectively and faithfully the name of Jesus because that is our authority. The authority very simply is the name of Jesus. So after permissions have been canceled, after legal rights have been removed and confessions have been made, every demon will bow in the name of Jesus. It's not an option. It's not a maybe. Demons bow at the name of Jesus. Uh, remind the demons that he's your Lord. Remind them occasionally that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Uh, remind yourself uh, who you are in Christ. And don't take anything off of demons. Don't, don't believe their lies. And so uh, the, I think walking in freedom is really not that complicated. It, and, and it's not, uh, it's not a matter of legalism and being uh, some kind of religious uh, perfectionist. That's not what it, what it is at all. It's, a, it's walking out a relationship with Jesus Christ where you don't allow things in your life that defeat you. You don't allow things that displease God. Uh, the, the, the book of First John says that we know we receive those things we ask of Him because we do those things that are pleasing in His sight. That's a pretty good promise. You do the things that please Him, uh, that, that's a good promise. And so uh, that's the way you stay free is recognizing and, and uh, it, you, there's a measure of security in standing and walking in the truth. I, I want to mention five typical attacks of Satan. Uh, they're not always this way, but they kind of fall in this category. The scripture says that Satan is a liar and he's the father of lies. So any, any attack will always include a lie some kind of untruth. And some people just because of uh, fleshly desires as a believer want to be something that maybe God hasn't called them to be, can believe a lie uh, in the area of spiritual gifts. Uh, that's, a, that's an area to be careful in, is to, to not seek something that satisfies the flesh, but to seek that which is truth. And so, all of the attacks will always uh, include a lie. Uh, one meaning of the name Satan is accuser. Uh, recognize that you will be accused, uh, falsely accused. He'll lie to you. He'll condemn you. And when I say he, it's not Satan himself that we deal with. Uh, you know he's one fallen angel. He's just one. And uh, I, sometimes I say, I doubt that he has ever been to my house. But his demons uh, we deal with on a regular basis, and they are accusers of the brethren. The Bible says that when the angels were created, however many that may have been, uh, billions, uh, they were all created to minister uh, to the heirs of salvation, to minister to the saints. But the Bible also says when those demons